Hello there and welcome back to English for Professionals. I'm Derek and I'm here with another short lesson for you busy people. In this Business English Meetings lesson, I'm going to share lots of useful advanced phrases to help you communicate more effectively in business meetings. A quick tip before we get started. When you've watched this lesson, make sure to go and check out all of my other meetings lessons here on YouTube. You'll find a link in the description below. And now, let's get started. Sometimes in business meetings, people don't explain things clearly. And sometimes they use words and phrases that we just don't know. So let's take a look at some useful ways to ask for clarification. I'm not sure what you're trying to say here. Could you please elaborate? I'm not sure what you're trying to say here. Could you please elaborate? To elaborate means to give more detail. I'm not exactly sure what you mean by synergies. I'm not exactly sure what you mean by synergies. What exactly do you mean by exclusive content? What exactly do you mean by exclusive content? I'm sorry, but I'm not familiar with that term. Maybe you could explain it in other words? I'm sorry, but I'm not familiar with that term. Maybe you could explain it in other words? If you're not familiar with something, it means you don't know it. I'm afraid I don't quite follow. Would you mind explaining that again, please? I'm afraid I don't quite follow. Would you mind explaining that again, please? Would you mind, followed by the ing form, is a very polite way of making a request. Great, so that's asking for clarification, but what if somebody asks you for clarification? What I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is. The point I'm trying to make is. The point I'm trying to make is. What I mean by synergies is. What I mean by synergies is. Okay, let me put it in other words. Okay, let me put it in other words. And one more example. All right, let me rephrase that. All right. Let me rephrase that. The next thing we're going to look at is introducing ideas and suggestions. Something we often need to do in meetings. I haven't thought this through yet, but how about? I haven't thought this through yet, but how about? To think something through means to think about something carefully or in detail. If you say that you haven't thought something through, you're letting people know that it's a spontaneous idea or a new idea. This is a good phrase to use when you're brainstorming. And here's another good phrase for brainstorming. This might sound crazy, but why don't we? This might sound crazy, but why don't we? Another useful phrase for introducing ideas and suggestions. Here's something that might be worth thinking about. Here's something that might be worth thinking about. I'm not sure if this will work in practice, but... I'm not sure if this will work in practice, but... Perhaps we could? Perhaps we could? Excellent! So some useful phrases for introducing ideas and suggestions. And now let's look at some phrases for reacting positively to ideas and suggestions. If you ask me, that's a perfectly acceptable solution or suggestion or idea. If you ask me, that's a perfectly acceptable solution or suggestion or idea. Brilliant idea. I can't think of any reason not to try it. Brilliant idea. I can't think of any reason not to try it. 
So here you hear the emphasis on the word not. I can't think of any reason not to try it. That's definitely worth considering. That's definitely worth considering. So that's definitely worth thinking about. I'm absolutely convinced that would work. I'm absolutely convinced that would work. But what if someone makes a suggestion that we don't agree with? Let's take a look. I'm sorry, but I just can't see that working. I'm sorry, but I just can't see that working. Or, I'm sorry, but that's completely out of the question. It's a waste of time. I'm sorry, but that's completely out of the question. It's a waste of time. When we say that something is out of the question, we mean that it's impossible. We just can't see how it can be done. I'm afraid that makes absolutely no sense to me. I'm afraid that makes absolutely no sense to me. Sorry, but it's just not feasible. It's too expensive. Sorry, but it's just not feasible. It's too expensive. If something is not feasible, it means it can't be done or achieved. And if we do react negatively to an idea or suggestion, we often follow this up by challenging the idea or suggestion. Has it occurred to you that we will probably lose a lot of customers if we go in this direction? Has it occurred to you that we will probably lose a lot of customers if we go in this direction? Asking someone if something has occurred to them is another way of asking if they have thought about something. We can also use negative questions to challenge a suggestion. Wouldn't it be better to try option two first? Wouldn't it be better to try option two first? Or, won't that create a lot of uncertainty among our staff? Won't that create a lot of uncertainty among our staff? And we can emphasize a point by using the auxiliary verb. You do realize that we don't have the budget for that. You do realize that we don't have the budget for that. So here the auxiliary verb do is emphasized. And one more example. You do understand the impact that something like this can have on the business. You do understand the impact that something like this can have on the business. So that brings us to the end of another short lesson. I hope you found it helpful and that you have the chance to try some of those phrases in your next meeting. If you did like the lesson, hit the like button and share with your friends and colleagues. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that and join my email list. Every two weeks, I send out my free vocabulary email with additional business English, words from the news and everyday English for you to learn. The link is in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching and see you soon.